Good morning, C.N. Jenkins family. We welcome you on this beautiful fourth Sunday of the month of August 2020. I'm Elder Aaron Alexander, and I have the esteemed pleasure of guiding you through our service this morning. We thank you for tuning in today. And as we begin our service, we'd like for you to call on us together as we join together in prayer. souls. We love you with an amazing love because you first love us. We, God, we ask that you would continue to direct our paths, that you would open up our hearts to receive your word on this day, that you would call us closer to you, O oh God, and call us into that secret place, that place, O oh God, where you heal our souls, where you give us strength to endure another day, where you, O oh God, speak a word that is so real and alive and active in our hearts. Holy God, open up our eyes to see your word on this day as we read your scripture. And help us, O oh Lord, to find strength in every word that comes from you. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
siblings, my brothers and sisters, this is the day the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Our scripture this morning comes from the Gospel of Luke. It is the 11th chapter. It is verses 1 through 3, the New International Version. Hear ye the word of the Lord. One day Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. He said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, give us each day our daily bread. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. For a while, I would like to preach and teach with this sermon title in mind, Living on Daily Bread, Living on Daily Bread. I believe we can all agree that there are some things that we need on a daily basis. Amen. Some of those items are food and water and shelter and oxygen and most of all, love. There is a psychologist named Abraham Maslow who argues that humans have five levels of hierarchy of human basic needs. Level one, he says, includes the need that we have for physical survival. Some of those things I've already mentioned, like food and drink and shelter and sleep and oxygen. And if a person cannot satisfy these basic needs, the need begins to dominate the person's mind with concern and they cannot think of anything else. Likewise, level two is similar, but includes physical safety needs. It is the desire for people to feel safe in this world. But if they are deprived of that safety, the result is living a life of fear. And similar to level one, when a person is fearful, all concentration goes to calming the fear with no thought of any other task. Then there is level three, which goes a little bit deeper to the need that we all have for love and belonging. We all have a basic need to be loved by someone and belong to a group. You know, that group could be a loving family, a book club, or even those sister circles or those brothers that you just hang out with. God created us in community. Therefore, we are naturally sociable and need connection with other people. And when we are deprived from this level of basic need, we become bored and joyless, even if we seem happy and successful. There are feelings of loneliness, pain, sadness, separation, and unworthiness that began to surface for us. Then level four explores our self-esteem. Y'all, there is a natural need for all people to feel valued and count for something in this world. This feeling instills confidence, self-esteem instills confidence, achievement, independence, and freedom in us. It is thought by Maslow if all four of these levels are met, then a new level begins to emerge, and that is level five. On level five, it is understood of there's a level of self-fulfillment. This is the space where we are aware of living in completeness, joyfulness, and unforgettable moments of joy, unity, and understanding. This is literally the space that all humans desire to reside in. Well, well what I want us to realize is that it is normal to feel overwhelmed when your basic needs are not met. It is normal to feel scared when you feel unsafe. It is normal to be withdrawn, sad, or lonely if you do not believe that you have a space where people love you fully and accept you for who you are. 
But today I want to do some reshaping of the narrative that the world oftentimes projects onto us. You know, the world tells us that we have the, if we have the nice car, the house, the clothing, the friendships, the connections, that these things will make us happy. And yes, I'm saying that we do need the basic needs met. That is a fact. But there is something greater than following the Maslow's hierarchy of basic needs to move into fulfillment. You can go on and say amen or even type it in the chat. All I'm saying is a relationship with the triune God is all you need for a life of fulfillment, worth, and freedom. As children of God, fulfillment or wholeness in life does not come from our striving or our self-seeking human abilities. It comes from feasting on the living word, yes, that bread from heaven, that daily bread. The basic needs that you and I need in this pandemic, before this pandemic, in this political climate, through racial discrimination, through earthquakes and plagues, through job loss, uh, mental stress, it comes uh, from feasting on the daily word of God uh, and realizing that we live, move, and have our being in Christ. What I'm saying is the physical survival, the safety needs, the love and belonging, the worth and value, the community, the relationships, and the life's fulfillment, it is a gift. It is a freely given gift from being in relationship with an almighty God. Every good and perfect gift comes from above. Well, as we go to our text in Luke chapter 11, verse 3, Jesus helps us understand this. Jesus models his prayer life before his followers. The act of prayer becomes his life source to remain connected to God. He prays in the presence of his followers and then seemingly begins to draw them into this spiritual practice. And one of the disciples leads them to a sense of curiosity to ask Jesus, teach me how to pray. Jesus does not only turn to the one disciple who asks, but addresses them, it says in the text, the multiple disciples as he proceeds to teach about the posture of prayer. In Luke's account, Jesus says, when you pray, say, Lord, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, give us this day our daily bread. From this, Jesus teaches to begin prayer by bringing to mind the character of God. Then the reign of God and next the abundance of God's faithfulness to fulfill our daily needs. It is important to position yourself in prayer, immediately bringing to mind the goodness of the God you are communing with. Oh, I think I must say that one more time. It's important when you start out with your prayers to bring to your mind the goodness, the grace, and the mercy of the almighty God that you are in the presence of. We must understand praying to a God that looks beyond your faults and sees your needs. Praying to a God that will supply all of of your needs according to his riches and glory. When we do this first, when we position ourselves to understand the character of God, prayers flow just a little bit differently. There is a boldness that wells up in our spirits and we go to that throne of grace with confidence, knowing if the Lord hears us, uh, then God will answer our prayers. Then we proceed to knowing, believing that God is in control of all things. 
We can call on the kingdom of God to come in prayer and do what God does best. You know how our God does it. God heals and restores and revives and transforms and renews and provides and covers us from danger seen and unseen. And then God is a resurrecting God. God will bring things back to life. Then we stand with our hearts open in the midst of all the changes you know, those highs and the lows, and we ask the Lord, give us each day our daily bread. Give us, O oh Lord, what we're saying is give us, O oh Lord, what we need to endure. And I don't know if there's someone out there today that says, oh God, I need just a little strength to endure. I just need a little more money so I can go out and buy me some food. God, I need you to provide for my needs. Well, it has become a more apparent to me over the last few months and weeks as we go deeper into the longevity of this pandemic that daily, we need daily comfort, daily peace, daily joy, daily strength, daily perseverance of food and direction what we need is daily bread to make it through this season and beyond this season. And before this season came, we needed the daily bread of God to be victorious in our spirits and in our souls as we navigate this journey of life. We need daily help from the Lord to navigate virtual learning spaces with multiple children having to work at home at the same time. Y'all can just say amen if that's down your street. We need daily help from the Lord to help instill understanding in our supervisors so they'll be flexible with our schedules as parents so that they can take so that we can take care of the needs of our family. We need help to navigate the, the issues around poverty, the homelessness, the, the job loss, the, the lack of living wage, and to be the church in the world and to care for our neighbors in the midst of this pandemic and beyond. We need the daily bread that we need to navigate through life situations. And life does not stop, and we have to navigate through it all. We need daily perseverance to navigate a toxic political environment where people are being degraded, where mailboxes are being removed. And I don't know who to believe sometimes when it comes to the news. Who do we believe? People are arguing with each other on Facebook and Instagram and YouTube and whatever else social media comes because this is a toxic political environment. Now, I do want to put a plug in today because I'm not going to tell you how to vote, but I need every person listening today uh, to decide how you are going to vote and do it. Uh, there are many early voting stations in Mecklenburg County. If you are in Mecklenburg County, if you're not, find your voting locations. But there are more in Mecklenburg County than there have been in the past years. So I'm just going to lay this right here. All I'm saying, and I'm saying it with a loud voice, uh, vote early or vote on election day. Uh, but please do not choose not to vote. Uh, please choose to vote and let your vote cast, cast your vote and let your vote speak for your voice. Uh, because our ancestors died so that you uh, would have the ability to vote. Y'all, we need daily bread to navigate it all. So, you know, I rejoice in the part of the prayer that says, Lord, give us each day our daily bread. This means we can ask God for help and God will give us exactly what we need. The daily bread is not given because of anything that we have done. It is manifested through being in Christ. Our identities as children of God connected as siblings with Jesus gives us access to every good and perfect gift. Let me just explain it a little bit for you. 
in the gospel of John chapter 6 verses 32 through 36, Jesus is talking to a crowd of people as he explains the fullness of God's provision and Jesus's power. Jesus says, very truly, I tell you, it is not Moses who has given you the bread from heaven, but it is my father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is the bread that comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Sir, they said, always give us this bread. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry and whoever gives believes in me will never be thirsty. But as I told you, you have seen me and still you do not believe. My siblings in Christ, our big brother Jesus is the bread of life that provides every basic physical and survival need that we have. We must only believe. I'm going to say it one more time. Jesus is the one that holds everything that we need. The basic physical survival needs, the love, the belonging, all the things that we desire. Jesus possesses it. We must only believe. And then the fruit of our relationships with Jesus goes further. Jesus not only provides our basic needs, number one, Jesus saves us and intercedes for us in prayer in our time of need. Hebrews chapter 7 verse 25 says, Therefore, he is able to save completely those who, who come to God through him because he always lives to intercede for them. Then all I want to show and understand for us is that Jesus is interceding. Jesus has saved us. Jesus is doing the work. And then as we look a little bit deeper, we look and Isaiah 46, 3 through 4, and we understand the character of God, the character that shapes our prayers, the posture of our prayer. And this Isaiah reads, listen to me, O house of Jacob, all you who remain of the house of Israel, you whom I have held since you were conceived and have carried since your birth, even to your old age and gray hairs, I am here. I am he who will sustain you. I have made you and I will carry you. I will sustain you and I will rescue you. All I'm trying to say, church, is God made, carried, sustains, loves, cares, and rescues you daily through our relationship with Jesus Christ. And I just believe that's something to shout about her. All of these things that I have just talked about uh, are freely given gifts uh, from being a child of the Most High God. And all I'm trying to say today, brothers and sisters, is being a child of God is synonymous for knowing uh, that God will take care of you. Uh, you can depend on the daily bread to show up on your behalf. Uh, you can depend on God to provide what you need. Uh, and I do not believe that God desires uh, bad things to happen to us. Uh, I believe every good and perfect gift comes from God. I, I believe God makes all things work together for our good. I, I believe God turns things around to the praise of God's glory. And if you agree with me, I just like you to chat, type chat in the type amen in the chat and just let us celebrate for a little while. An awesome God, the one who leads us beside 
beside the still waters uh, and restores our souls. Uh, the one that makes us lie down in green pastures uh, and is a strong tower that we can run in and be safe. Uh, this is the God that is the lover of our souls and the sweet spirit that calms uh, our weary minds. God is our strength uh, and very present help uh, in the time of trouble. Oh my God, my God, our basic needs are naturally given to us by an almighty God. Y'all, we must stop from worrying and pacing the floor. But when we get acquainted with our Savior and our identity and worth as children of God, when fears that try to creep in and take up residence in our hearts, we will say stop and call forth our daily bread. The daily bread is Jesus, for Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus has all power in his hands. Jesus calms every storm and silences the raging winds. Jesus heals our brokenness and gives us joy, unspeakable joy. We must call on our daily bread because we have not because we ask not, but when we open up our mouths and we call on the name of Jesus, then blessings will come down. God will hear us and God will come to our rescue. Well, we must do all of these things. And I, and I think that mainly what I'm trying to say here, that we have to fully surrender to living in Christ. Because the truth of the matter is that we have not begun living until we have fully surrendered to living a life dedicated, surrendered, released, given away to Christ. So I pose to you three ways that we can remain surrendered to living on this daily bread. Number one is seeking Jesus in prayer daily. Y'all, the pattern of prayer for the Jewish people was to pray three times a day, in the morning, afternoon, and evening. It was a consistent posture of prayer throughout the day that reminded the followers of God's presence, power, and provision over their lives. To live on daily bread is to consistently posture yourself in prayer Paul calls it praying without ceasing. I call it a life dependent on God. Mark Batterson in the Circle Maker said, as he was talking about bringing about God's vision for our lives, that we must pray as if it depends on God and work as if it depends on us. Prayer is not a formula to get what you want. It is an act of surrendering our will and needs while opening our heart and mind to the move of God. Prayer opens our hearts to receive the purpose and plan God has for us. Prayer is a space created for conversation with God, holy communion with God. It's a vessel of surrendering cares and concerns while picking up joy, peace, and strength as you are being made new. In prayer, we are communing with the Almighty God. We are in the presence of God. Yes, we are having conversation, but we are also feasting on the daily bread. We are experiencing a fresh encounter with God. We are listening to God to speak directly to our situation. We are lifting the, God is lifting the worries and concerns from our shoulders and God is making the burden light. In prayer, God speaks back to us. Yes, I said it in prayer. God speaks back to us. Prayer is not a one-way conversation where we treat God like a genie in a bottle asking for three wishes and expecting it to happen. Prayer is surrender, surrendering our will to embrace the will of the Father, building a relationship with the mother God who is in love with your soul, living in the pathway that develops intimacy with God as you rely, reside in that sweet place, in the presence of the risen Lord, basking in the awe of God's glory, hanging on 
to every word spoken, being and hearing all God has to pour into your soul. My brothers and sisters, this is prayer. This is prayer of being in that space of transformation. Prayer nourishes your soul like you never had it nourished before. It is a balm to our broken and fearful hearts, a comfort to the broken, a relief to the overwhelmed, freedom from judgment and shame, filled with love and belonging at the heart of prayer is knowing that everything will be all right. It reminds me of the space that was created for me by my parents as a young girl. To be in the presence of my mom and dad would instantly calm every fear, reduce any anxiety, and bring a warm, comforting blanket of peace. I knew that everything would be okay because of their presence, you know, their presence was safety. I knew I was cared for it and loved and accepted in that space. This is the space God creates for you and for me. In the presence of the Lord is safety. You can be authentically vulnerable with God. You know, you can tell God the real deal, not the sugar-coated version of your story, but the uncut story. Yeah, you can get raw with God, and God will embrace you, and God will call to you, and God will love you through it, and God will free you in the midst of it, and God will care for your soul like you have never felt care before. To live on the daily bread is to go to God in this sweet place of prayer. And in this sweet place of prayer, God holds your jewels. Those things that you call them that are breakable. Those things that are tender to your heart. Those things that you feel that you can't surrender to anyone else. God holds them with the comfort and the care of a God that sees you and is coming to you. And that is walking with you and that understands the pain that you endure. God is with you in prayer. So we have to go to God in prayer. And then secondly, we must rely daily on the power of Jesus to show up for you. There are times in our lives that we may think, Lord, I know you can do this. But will you do it for me? I think John the Baptist gives us a wise posture of prayer when he says, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. Help us, Lord, to fully believe every word that proceeds from your mouth. Help us believe without a shadow of a doubt every promise that you have declared is ours. Help us trust in your direction and day and night. Help us live by your word and declare your promises over our lives. Lord, help us believe because the realization is the power of Jesus will shift any situation. Can a sister just get an amen? Type it in the chat, scream it from the rooftop, rooftops. If you have seen the power of Jesus shift in, shift your situation in your life, or maybe it's in a friend's life, uh, just give me a shout in the chat or just type, yes, that is me. It does our souls good to recall the magnitude uh, of Jesus's power. So if I could just take a few minutes to just call the road on just a few miracles uh, that Jesus has done uh, and just say amen whenever I get down your street. Uh, there was a man born blind. Jesus spat on the ground, made some mud, put it on his eyes, told him to go wash in the pool of Shalom, uh, and he was made well. Uh, a man was disabled for 38 years and lay by the pool of Bethesda. Jesus asked him, uh, do you want to be made well? Uh, after conversation with him, Jesus says, rise, uh, take up your bed and walk. Uh, immediately, he was made well. Uh, Jairus, his daughter, who was dead upon Jesus' arrival, took her by the hand and said, get up. And she got up uh, another miracle from Jesus. And then there was Lazarus. Uh, Jesus goes to Lazarus's tomb and Jesus says, Lazarus, come out. And Lazarus came forth at the command of Jesus's voice uh, 
because Jesus is the resurrection and the life. All I'm trying to say is that the name of Jesus, miracles will happen and every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord to glory of the God, the Father. So can we just cancel in Jesus' name the fear that plagues our minds, the anger that wells up in our bellies, the resentment, the anxiety that tries to take over our minds and spirits by speaking the name of Jesus over our situation, uh, casting our cares unto the Lord and asking Jesus uh, to kill every toxic emotion uh, and replace it with joy, peace, and love. Yes, so oh God, Jesus will do it on your behalf, on, on my behalf, on, on all uh, or of our behalf, for you can rest assured there is no situation Jesus cannot heal, no sadness Jesus cannot comfort, and no problem Jesus doesn't have the answer for. And I believe that there are at least 10 people who will testify with me that in the midst of this pandemic, Jesus is still performing miracles. You might say Jesus stopped harm from reaching your dwelling or Jesus covered you from danger seen and unseen or Jesus restored your peace, your strength, your money and love or maybe Jesus healed your mind, your body, emotions, community, family or soul. Jesus has the power to do anything and everything according to his will. Oh, my brothers and sisters, to live by daily bread is to pray consistently. Rely on the power of Jesus to show up in your lives and bring transformation. And lastly, my last point is uh, living on daily bread uh, is to live with daily expectancy. Just say that with me. Live with daily expectancy. Y'all, my husband is an Army veteran. He served three years active duty and four years reserve. And when he wakes the girls up in the morning, y'all, it's funny. He recites a chant that reminds him of his Army days. And this is something that he made up and parts of it comes from a movie, but something that reminds him of when he was in, an, in the Army. And it goes a little something like this. And he says it real loud, y'all, like real loud. He says, what are you waiting for? Breakfast in bed? Is there any another? This is another glorious day in the army. Another glorious day in the army is like a day on the farm. Every meal is a banquet. Every formation a parade. I love the army. And y'all, you should see the girls. It take them a few minutes because they're rattled because their dad comes in screaming at them. But before you know it, some, you know, they jump up to their feet and they are literally like jumped up with renewed energy and they are looking forward to the next day. They start getting themselves together and they have so much energy and they are pumped. Every morning, God allows us to wake up on this side of glory. We must wake with expectancy to experience what God has in store for us in another glorious day, we expect that the day will be filled with God's goodness and mercy that follows us all the days of our lives. We must look for the glory of God in every situation and how God would use us for his glory. What I'm saying is we have to expect our daily bread to be prepared and ready to receive it. Amen. But if truth be told, we must take time to thank God for the multitude of blessings uh, that we have received even uh, when we did not deserve them. Someone might just want to say amen. Uh, we might just want to say thank you, God, for helping me graduate uh, when I slacked off in school. Uh, 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God, for getting me out of that situation. You know the one, oh God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, for your grace because you didn't have to do it. Thank you, Lord, for the partner I have in life. I feel like I don't deserve them, but you saw fit to bless me abundantly. Thank you, Lord, for all the ways you look beyond my faults and you saw my needs. Can we just say thank you, Lord, for the blessings that I didn't work for and I would say I don't deserve them, but you bless me abundantly. We must live in expectancy of the daily bread to show up for us. Live knowing that Jesus will provide strength when we are weary due to the many restrictions. Live relying uh, on God's direction to navigate hard decisions during COVID-19 for the health and safety of our children, our families, and ourselves. Uh, live daily looking for Jesus to give us exactly what we need uh, to thrive in 2020. Jesus is essential for human life. Jesus is uh, the bread of life. And as I bring this sermon to a close, I would like to close with this illustration of living on daily bread by explaining the physio physiology of bread. Y'all, bread is a carbohydrate, and some of us, we try to stay away from bread. But bread as a carbohydrate provides the body with fuel or energy to survive. Bread has several nutrients or vitamins in it to help the overall health of the body. And these nutrients or vitamins include calcium and fiber and protein and iron and B vitamins, folate, niacin that releases energy from food and maintains, helps to maintain our healthy skin, eyes, and nails. But this is the peculiarity around this bread is that in order for bread to provide the essential elements or nutrients that I've just described, during its life cycle, a grain of wheat must first die and be reborn later in the form of a spike capable of providing substance to humans beings making wheat the quintessential nutri nutrient or nutritional plant for humanity. So all I really came to tell you this morning, I'm summing it up in one essential illustration, uh, is that Jesus is the quintessential element, the most perfect example of quality and substance for our life. Jesus is uh, the living bread. Jesus is uh, the bread of life. Jesus is uh, the daily bread. Uh, and there is none like him. There is none beside him. Jesus, uh, listen to this, had to die on Calvary's cross for for you and for me so that we might have life abundantly, life eternally for the wages of sin and death. But the gift of God is eternal life. Jesus had to die. But on the third day, he rose with all power in his hands, becoming the quintessential element, the most important element, the perfect example in equality for eternal life. And this was for the whole world, the entire world. Jesus is the bread of life, the savior of all of humanity. And because of the bread of life, the one who walks with us and talks with us and reminds us that we are his own, that we don't have to be afraid of COVID-19. We don't have to worry about our children and schools. We don't have to leave sleep over over the political climate. Uh, we don't have to fight people over issues and situations of discrimination. Uh, we don't have to worry about our worth and value. Uh, we don't have to worry about our physical survivor, our safety, our love, our belonging, because Jesus is the one uh, who will provide every basic need. Uh, and we need to just trust in the Lord uh, and don't depend on our own understanding understanding. Uh, surrender our cares at the feet of Jesus. Uh, vote in November. Can I say it once again? I said vote. Uh, act justly. Seek mercy and walk humbly with God. Uh, be on the side of Jesus on every issue. Uh, extending love to your neighbor. Loving 
loving people with an agape love, being merciful and extending grace. And God will take care of the rest. Living on daily bread means God's got you, boo. Jesus is interceding for you. And the Holy Spirit is surrounding you. So I say this rest in the promises of daily bread. God has already ordered your steps. God has already ordained your days. Trust in God's daily provision and watch the Lord work. Watch the Lord make a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. God will do it for you and God will do it for me. In the name of the one who saved us, who redeemed us, who watches over us, and who feeds us daily. In that name, amen. Yesterday, today, and gratefully tomorrow. And third, live with da daily expectancy. Know from whom your help comes from, your source. Seeing Jenkins, we are grateful and humble. We thank you for tuning in. We wanted to continue to thank you for subscribing to Seeing Jenkins. Continue to subscribe, continue to hit the like button, and continue to share. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he shine his glory and mercy upon you. May he lift up his smile and give you peace. Have a blessed week, Sam Jenkins. Thank you, and we love you. <laughs>